Welcome back to Bruise with the Homies. This is your host, Bruise with D, bro. On this episode, we got a special guest in a special location. You know, we had a audible. We're at Horse Trailer Hideout, and the special guest is Mr. Jixie over here. How's Howdy, it going? everybody. It's going great, bro. Thanks for having me on, guys. Anytime. As usual, we got Bruise with JB and Heron Bruise over here. How are you guys doing? Beautiful. Pretty good, you know. We're ready to rock and roll on this one so we're ready gonna to go rock and roll straight into kind of like our bite series what we do so we're gonna run this one right here so it's from wolf king uh during the bachelor party for james we got to go down to solaris and talk with the owner the head brewer liam and he is starting his kind of own thing with wolf king and he gave us some cans to try on this run so it's gonna be a called strawberry silk sheets it's a sour ale with strawberry guava and marshmallow so we wanted to do this one with jay because we've been sharing with him for a long time now we love how he talks about beer the styles that he loves and we'll get into that on our other episode where we go more into who he is what he <laughs> likes and all the fun stuff about him but for this one guys let's jump into it it's going to be a 6.5 abv and to remind everyone a sour ale Cheers, Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Cheers, guys. Wow. Bye. Is there, like, any peanuts or anything in this? No. <laughs> there is an incredible character, that marshmallow. Yeah. The There's a physicality, that marshmallow, that is really hard to get down, especially in fruited sours, where marshmallow usually just a buzzword that breweries are going to use in place of vanilla. A marshmallow, if you didn't know, is vanilla extract, sugar, gelatin. There's absolutely nothing in there that lends itself any kind of unique flavor. But this has a unique body to go along with that flavor. You get rolling vanilla. It's milky and upfront, but not in a way that's immediately dairy or off-putting. Really good balance on the viscosity. It's just interesting to find marshmallow almost itself as an adjunct. Like, you could have this floating in the top of it. And yeah. it would be almost identical. You could put marshmallow in this yourself. That's wild. Yeah, because like we had this sometime last week as like our test run, and Heron and I were trying to debate like how to explain this properly and how the unique marshmallow characteristic like played a role. And I think you summed it up to the T right there, Jake. <laughs> but it's something that we described it as kind of something so different from when you see marshmallow in a beer or a stout you're like expecting just a sweet kind of like vanilla taste like you don't mm -hmm. get like a whole characteristic that embodies the marshmallow there but another point i like to hit on is like the strawberry characteristic with the guava how they pair very well yeah um kind of reminded me of like a strawberry like yogurt ball um or like the cream savers yeah kind of all that in that realm and i think it's incredible um for kind of the background of what he was saying, what he wants to do with Wolf King, bring a lot of cool styles and beers that he knows people will like and enjoy. Yeah. And like to his specialty. So I think this one lived up to the hype that and kind of what he said he was going to bring to the table. And I'm excited to try more from him. Heron, I want to hear your thoughts. I know yeah. you kind of talked about it before. Now that you're a little bit more sober this time, you have less beer in you allegedly. i want to hear the full yeah. allegedly yeah <laughs> allegedly to the camera uh it's kind of like a on the nose I, I always love going nose first so on the nose it's kind of like a candied strawberry and it's just like fun you know it's gonna be fun i i like strawberry in a candy some people may not you know some people don't like uh you know banana in a candy or whatever whatever your thing is but it smells like a strawberry candy on the nose and then like once the liquid hits your mouth it's you get that like marshmallow kind of feel to it not only is it like a flavor of that vanilla and but it's more than vanilla as jake described it's you also get that on the body of it so i think i don't know it's really fun super approachable super yeah. drinkable we talk about drinkability all the time it's very important this thing i could probably like crush a 16 ounce can I don't know, in three minutes if I'm having a good conversation and <laughs> yeah. talking the whole time, and I can, I, I'm able to sip. You know, yeah. it's one of those conversations where I'm just like, uh-huh, yeah, thank you. All right, okay, yeah, that's interesting. And you just keep sipping? Like, yeah. I could kill this in, like, three minutes' time, like, easy. Yeah, yeah, I think you hit everything there. and Yeah, just even on the aftertaste, like, you kind of get, like, the softness or something, like, pillowy, almost, like, 
put that marshmallow flavor in. Yeah, I'm wondering if the guava is actually at odds with the sweetness and the strawberry. To me, it seems like you get a rolling strawberry up front, like you said. Yeah. That sweetness carries that berry note, and then immediately, right before the finish, it just quickly covered up by that guava. It, it doesn't stand alone as a guava flavor almost. It's more bubblegummy, but you're absolutely right. Like, it, it is a medley at the end of the day. These are not just flavors working in conjunction. They're well parsed as well, but it is surprising to get them so well delineated from one another in a single sip. Yeah. Like, this is a frothed beer. This is, like, there. you could tell me there was an egg white in this, and I would probably believe you just based on the actual <laughs> body yeah. of it. Like, you took the coffee frother and put it in this bad boy, I believe you on face immediately. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very heavily bodied beer, despite how light it is. It's incredible. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's the perfect, like, balance and blend of drinkability, advanced craftsmanship of being able to put these flavors together and bode well to where not one is overpowering the other and controlling the whole beer. So, yeah, I think with that one, that's a great little wrap-up on that. Thanks again, Liam uh, Wolfking, for allowing us to have this beer. We appreciate you. And make sure to check out the other episode we do with Jake and get to know more about him. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Cheers.